So thank you very much. I uh, thank the Ajanta Pharma to give me this opportunity to present my talk on herpetic keratitis. Uh, and of course, the word is demystified because that's the name of this whole symposium. And uh, so I've talked about this topic a number of times before, but every time I go on to it and prepare, I see that something, something different has come out uh, in this. You know, I'll start from very basic that why, although Vishal just now talked about recalcitrant bacterial keratitis and we've been talking about bacterial and fungal keratitis, but uh, the viral keratitis is definitely differs from bacterial and fungal keratitis because it happens to be chronic and the biggest bugbear of viral keratitis is recurrent and it has frequent relapses. So that is something which we need to deal with and we have yet not been able to find an answer to that. Uh, it was earlier said that it is not uh, common in our kind of countries, but it's not uncommon. I mean, uh, we do see it quite often. Uh, it is painful, site-threatening infection. And as I've already said, that the disease is recurrent, and the recurrent comes in the form of stroma or endothelial disease. I mean, if, if you've been following up your uh, viral keratitis patients regularly, you can uh, always tell the patient that these symptoms come up and you know, I'll be showing you some slides that how to see the recurrent stromal or endothelial disease. It very often leads to morbidity and leading on to corneal scarring and uh, neovascularization. Uh, sometimes you feel whether you are always thinking whether I should go for a corneal graft in this patient or not go for a corneal graft. So therefore that affects the quality of life, uh, especially when patient is not going through active infection. Uh, so to begin with, the you know when I how I look at my viral keratitis, uh, I have uh, uh, you know basically divided into whether virus is affecting the epithelium of the cornea, stromal of the cornea, uh, stroma of the cornea, or it is the endothelium, or it is the underlying iris tissue, uh, or it is the combination of all this. So if we really go by the first part, which is the epithelial keratitis. Uh, it's 60 percent of the ocular HSV basically has a corneal epithelial disease and typically speaking as seen over here, uh, it comes in the form of a dendrite. You know, this was something which you may miss. Patient says that something is different, uh, not able to open the eye. You may miss it if you're just seeing on torchlight or even a cursory slit lamp, you may miss it till you really see it and stain it and you're able to see this kind of uh, dendritic lesion and it has those terminal bulbs. And the important thing of these terminal bulbs that it is the virus which is actually growing over there. And uh, uh, it is this particular virus when it grows on these bulbs, they grow, they coalesce, and this is what leads on to a geographical ulcer. And this may be associated rather quite often that the corneal sensations are poor and uh, this may lead to neurotrophic keratitis. And I've had one or two patients whom despite the best of treatment, they landed up with corneal melts. Rarely it's been seen that they may resolve, but antiviral therapy is used to speed up the resolution. So these are some of the pictures of my patient only, just try to show that uh, how uh, viral, uh, the typical dendrite comes like this, and I've tried to stain it, and this is what it became after like within three days of healing. Uh, you know, this is what, I mean, everybody is familiar with this kind of a picture. And within one week's time with proper treatment, you can see that very minimal scar is left. That's if you treat it in a proper manner. The other form, after we've gone on to epithelial keratitis, we have to really understand that where the virus is growing or is it the inflammation associated with viral keratitis. The other form is a geographical ulcer. That is when the bulbs, as I said, they grow and they coalesce. It's like an amoeboid ulcer, which is present. And sometimes patients just come to you like this. And, you know, sometimes different kinds of treatment are given. But it is this geographical ulcer. When you stain it, you can actually see it. And here, there is present epithelial deficiency and there is present underlying Maybe some, you can see, you know, there is a defect over here and there is a stromal edema here. The other part, the next part, we have to define whether am I dealing with a stromal keratitis. Now, the stromal keratitis primarily may be a non-necrotizing or a necrotizing kind of an inflammation. 
and also it is an immune response to the epithelial disease or the virus which is there in the stroma. How do we differentiate between necrotizing or non-necrotizing inflammation? Uh, it's a non-necrotizing inflammation which has an intact epithelium and this is a disciform keratitis. We are all familiar with it. It may be focal, it may be diffuse, it may be multifocal. All these kind of things are there. That's why sometimes we have viral keratitis. Masquerades are also commonly seen. And it may be anterior jubiitis. And this disciform keratitis is primarily an immune stromal keratitis. So this is a stromal inflammation without necrosis. The other part uh, which we will come to now is a necrotizing inflammation. So this at times we may just have an immune ring. So this is how uh, a disciform keratitis, you may just have an area which is a focal edema. If you happen to form a slit, you will see this just focally there is present edema and there may be KPs over here. And this is basically I have tried to show a patient of ours whose left eye we had done a graft. Sometimes patients come to you with simple corneal opacity, right eye was fine at that time. We did a PK in this eye and when the patient was under the follow-up, it was a right eye, he presented with this kind of an edema. So this was basically a kind of a disciform keratitis. And now this is another entity which uh, everybody should be aware of, which is a necrotizing stromal keratitis. It's not uncommon. And uh, one may think and look at it and say, oh, it is a bacterial kind of a corneal abscess. But it's not that. There is a necrotic ulceration which is happening and there is a higher chance of corneal melt because it's such a severe inflammation. The point here is that in the stroma, the virus is replicating and the HSV DNA has been seen over there. Sometimes when it leads to severe inflammation, it may lead to corneal thinning and perforation. It may be associated, if it heals properly, to long-term vision loss due to corneal scarring and, scarring and neovascularization. So this is another patient of us. Uh, I'm just trying to show that patient presented in this kind of a form uh, with the, there's a central thinning. You can see I've taken the slit over here, the thinning, and this area was very dense. So one might think, oh, there is a small exudate and it's a fungal, uh, fungal inflammation over there. But it's not that. You can see there is underlying vascularity over here and the small area which is necrotic. I like to treat these patients with oral acyclovir 400 milligram five times a day. And you can see, like I follow them very, very closely every second day and see how this small infiltrate, which was like two millimeter to begin with, and see how it is started resolving over here and it may lead to thinning. So neck, I just want everybody to aware of this entity, a necrotizing viral keratitis, but it responds very nicely to oral acyclovir. And there is no need to give antibacterial, antifungal in these patients. There's another entity, as I've already told about stromal keratitis, disciform keratitis, which I showed earlier was a focal. And there is another one which is diffuse whole corneal edema may ha is there and there are KPs. I learned a lot about this. This is because in 91, I mean, when I was in RP center, we used to have a lady who used to come very regularly to us with very sudden onset of severe corneal edema and one eye. And that time, since I didn't know too much about it, uh, we always used to think and very high pressure with that digitally. The diagnosis of postnus Kaltzman was made. It was always made. It was a hypertensive uveitis, severe edema. And uh, in AC, one wasn't seeing very much. And we used to treat the patient giving typical anti-glaucoma, but never resolving. It's only in 96 when I went to Peter Lipson, he told me, you're probably dealing with uh, viral keratitis. And uh, that's when I came back and uh, I put the patient on oral acyclovir. And uh, I mean, she responded. Of course, later I had to do a graph for her. But that's how, you know, one learns that these are the mascarades. Then you know, this entity I want to tell you is about a recurrent stromal keratitis. Um, you know, one may have these kind of localized lesions, but when they, these patients, if you tell this, I have, this is my one-eyed patient who was maintaining a 6 8 vision. Other eye, there was atrophic bulbi, left eye, localized area of, uh, you know, corneal scar. But since he knows his symptoms very well, whenever something new comes up, he says, my vision has dropped. 6-18 blood. And then after that, you know, you if you really happen to see this, 
that there are areas in which there will be scar and the other area there will be edematous. So that's how you make out that there is coming a recurrence. And this leads to stromal scar, thinning, neovascularization. Uh, so this is this, that patient I'm telling you who uh, fluctuates between 3 by 60 to 2 by 8, uh, 6 by 18. You know, he, he has two earlier scars, earlier wild keratitis, then he comes up and there is another area which has come up. You know, I've just taken a magnified view of this to just to show that you have to be very, very apt to know that which is the scar area and which is the edema. And this is a new area which has come up. So it's your diagrams which really help you in these cases. And here there is present a secondary cholesterol crystals also which come up. Mm. Then there is another entity of herpetic endothelitis. There is a some kind of a fusion between deep stromal keratitis and endothelitis. Here it is the endothelium with KPs which happen and again they respond nicely to oral acyclovir. So if I really, this is a picture which I have taken from an article in Ocular Surface that the, when you see the timeline, I like this if I put it up here, the timeline for clinical course in the pathogenesis of HSV keratitis if it is epithelial keratitis, it occurs in the first seven days, virus is replicating. Necrotizing keratitis, as I told you, virus is replicating in stroma also in first 14 days. And form of immune keratitis is an immune reaction, so it comes after seven days. Mm. This is another picture which I always like to show. This patient had a multifocal done by a good surgeon and patient was all right for a month. After that, the vision went down. And uh, patient was, of course, referred to me. And that's the time when I picked up this small central area of corneal edema, folds. Uh, and the surgeon was very sure that first one month patient was all right. And that's the time, you know, patient was actually having a viral keratitis and she responded very well to oral acyclovir. Another way uh, while keratitis may come, you may have sometimes trophic ulcers and sometimes one has resorted to amniotic membrane grafts over here or it may heal up and lead to thinning. And, you know, so patients actually sometimes present to us like this, you know, they refer to you for a coronal graft and you really don't know whether the patient has had viral keratitis earlier. But if I see now when there is thinning, vascularization, I presume it's about due to viral keratitis. And if this patient is taken for a corneal graft, I put the patient in oral acyclovir as a prophylaxis. The common presentation in our scenario is not never as typical as I've already told you. It is always a combined presentation of epithelium and the stroma. So we really need to see which part is active more and accordingly treat. If the, there is a defect present, the patient needs topical or a systemic acyclovir. Uh, another way a viral keratitis may happen, I mean, this is again any of a patient when there is a secondarily it may get infected. You know, you, we may get a combination of the two. Mm. So now once we have, of course, a very busy slide, I don't want you to see everything, but uh, uh, the treatment available in the armamentarium are like antivirals, uh, which is primary treatment. We have systemic uh, antivirals which are available to us, acyclovir, velocyclovir, and fabcyclovir. Mm, acyclovir and velocyclovir I use very, very often. And because velocyclovir, uh, the dose comes down, I mean, the frequency goes down. And uh, topical are acyclovir, TFT, and gancyclovir. TFT is not used so much in India. Uh, in USA, it's used very much more often. And uh, uh, of course, at times, people go for gancyclovir more often. But uh, uh, um, uh, I've seen this kind of, but gancyclovir and acyclovir are same in efficacy. Again, as far as the anti-inflammatory agents are concerned, we have corticosteroid therapy. Uh, we have topical cyclosporin and amniotic membrane grafts. And now, uh, going on to the application of this basic management, this is as per the head study, of course, it's again now 30 year old, but the results are still very, very relevant, which say that uh, the topical cortical steroid, they said significantly improves stromal keratitis. Oral acyclovir is beneficial in early resolution of stromal keratitis, not statistically significant, but trend was there. But oral acyclovir definitely has a role in treatment of aridocyclitis. It is, can be definitely used as a prophylactic measure to prevent the recurrence. And there is no benefit in the addition of oral acyclovir to HSV epithelial keratitis treated with topical TFT or steroids and TFT. 
Heads too said that there is no additional benefit of three-week course of oral ACV in preventing stromal keratitis or iritis if patient has already had epithelial keratitis. Mm, uh, but definitely it has a proven role in reducing the recurrence. So a lot of my patients are like lifelong ACV, uh, BD dose, and I've seen them having very minimal recurrences. The triggers, nothing is very proven right now. And the limitations of these treatment is, is quite a bit. So the treatment options, if you see topical TFT, it has a low bio bioavailability. Therefore, it is used nine times a day. And it has an ocular surface toxicity. Not We don't use it so very often. Topical acyclovir is a first-line treatment. It has less ocular surface toxicity. But mind you, at times, uh, topical, uh, I do see patients where patient actually has a dry eye and has irregular epithelium and patient is put on acyclovir taken like a viral keratitis. And you want me to finish one, Namrata? I'm going to finish. Okay. <laughs> I know. And uh, gancyclovir uh, is a neurosynthetic medication. Uh, and this is to be used three times a day. And of course, I prefer oral medication because it takes care of the ocular toxicity. As I told you about velocyclovir, this of course I've started using in patients who find it difficult to use five times a day acyclovir. Dose in the acute is one gram three times a day. And uh, it is also used in prophylactic. Systemic, uh, my, uh, this is what I have uh, designed after, uh, which I do in my practice after the heads, that systemic antivirals are to be used in prevention of recurrence of HSK. And systemic velocyclovir is insufficient data, whether it is as good or as bad or uh, ACT, no RCT is available. But velocyclovir can be used in alternative to acyclovir. And... Uh, and this is the way I have calculated. 800 milligram of acyclovir five times a day is equivalent to 500 milligram of velocyclovir BD. This is a pro drug. So when we use 400 milligram ACV BD, a lot of my patients were on this. I put them on 500 milligram velocyclovir OD. The only thing is cost. So, but some patients tolerate it. And uh, whenever I have to do a PK in uh, HSV keratitis. Uh, of course, I have done DALS also in this case, but at times I've landed up with unexpected lenticular edemas. And, uh, but PK, there are issue of glaucoma, higher incidence of graft rejection and disease uh, recurrence. M mind you, uh, if you happen to do a FACO in these cases, please put them on oral acyclovir. Otherwise, they do land up with recurrence because after that you put them on steroids or maybe secondary infection. I've had patients where there was a small scar, patient under had a trabecolectomy, Surgeon had not done anything till the patient landed up with infection or a recurrence after that. Future is in the use of immunomodulators, topical uh, IL-2 inhibitors, gene treatment. Of course, lots have come in gene treatment now. Disc vaccines uh, so that to prevent the recurrence. So the HSV latency, as I told you, is a big bugbear. So a lot of research is now going on how to take care of the latent virus, which is in the neuron. Uh, and uh, prevention, as I told you, you will use LATS is the research which is going on to inhibit the viral replication in the neuronal area. And so, and these DISC vaccines are also being uh, really thought about and the, this CRISPR technology to target viral genomes which are latent in the neuronal cells. So thank you very much. I'm not sure whether I made it more complicated or I demystified. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you so much, ma'am, for a master class on viral keratitis. It was indeed fantastic. A little small question till Nidhi gets her laptop ready. Nidhi. Yeah. So, uh, do you find any difference between endothelitis with the etiology of herpes versus uh, CMV? And how would you treat them? Would you treat them differently? And second part of the question, uh, second query I had is that uh, worldwide there's a trend of getting vaccinated, not in India, for herpes. So, does it really prevent recurrence in grafts also? Does it prevent uh, primary epithelial infection? Yeah, I cannot answer that question about whether a herpetic vaccine is preventing the recurrence. But your first question was on? Yeah, so CMB first is how to prove it is CMB endothelitis. It's only when you do the PCR from the aqueous and you get those titers. So that's all. So I've had maybe till now only maybe just three patients of CMV endothelitis and they also had HIV with them. So there I treated them specifically with gancyclovir gel and steroids. That's all. 
Thank you. Ma'am, ma can I ask one question? This is yeah, who's question. that? Here, ma'am, this ma is one question. Uh -huh. yeah. Ma'am, how do you maintain your ACVIR profile access when they have a deranged KFT, especially in the PK patients? I deranged PK. KFT. 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 Yeah, again, it is difficult. You know, I've somehow, I have not had any patient till now. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I have not had any patient till now, but uh, yes, it's it's difficult. Or it's anyone difficult. else in the panelist, if ma'am or sir would comment, anyone else, any... You have I to, you know, remember. life is more important, so maybe you have to take yeah. that. Can't remember any patient. I have not had KFT. Yeah, but I do keep getting their LFTs done very regularly and uh, KFTs done regularly. And I have not had any patient due to drug if they've landed up with a problem. Thank you. Thank you.